Hi, I'm His Lordship, the founder of the Wilderness Guardians. Welcome to the inaugural episode of Castle Critic, a series in which we examine the defensive capabilities of RuneScape's various castles. Together we're going to go on a journey to discover which of the castles could best defend itself against an oncoming attack. Which one would you want to be in if you found yourself besieged? Now you might be asking yourself, who am I to offer such insights? After all, entire careers have been built on the study of castle defences. I'll be the first to admit I am very much an amateur, and I hope to be corrected for my mistakes as this series progresses, so that I too can grow and learn more. However, I do think I'm well equipped to offer some insight on these matters for three reasons. Firstly, I consider myself to be a fairly well-travelled individual. On the screen here, you can see a partial list of castles that I've visited, most of which offer on-site information on those castles' defensive capabilities. Secondly, I do own and have read this book here, Castle Builders by Malcolm Hislop. It's a fantastic resource on castles of medieval England and partially northern France as well. This is particularly useful because that's the exact architecture that inspired the castles of RuneScape. And thirdly, I am an avid follower of the YouTube channel Shadowversity. This is a channel that explores various fictional castles and their effectiveness, as well as real life castles. If you haven't heard of Shadowversity, I thoroughly recommend you go check it out. Now, today we're going to be looking at Lumbridge Castle. Before we get started, we have to make a few assumptions about the way that RuneScape works. The first assumption is that our attackers are going to be humans or humanoid creatures, such as trolls and goblins. The reason we can't assume that we're going to be attacked by dragons or spirits or other magical creatures is that castles weren't designed with these in mind. You can see that the castles of RuneScape have a medieval influence, and once you start trying to defend against magical creatures, those designs are going to change drastically. Our second assumption is that most NPCs can't teleport, so we as players are privileged in that respect. If NPCs could readily teleport, again, the castle's defences would be completely different. They might not exist at all if a human could instead flee rather than defend a fortification. Our third assumption is that magic is going to have a negligible effect on fortifications. We know that the world of Gelenor is infused with this incredible sense of magic. However, again, this is going to change the fortifications too drastically if we can assume that spells can take down walls. And our final assumption is that cannons are fairly newly developed. We do see them scattered across RuneScape, and we can also see that dwarf cannons exist. However, dwarf cannons spin around, which means that they are structurally weak and they're not really designed for siege. The cannons that are placed on fortifications, we have to assume that they're fairly new and not as powerful either, because it was the rise of cannons and gunpowder in the medieval era that rendered castles redundant. So now we arrive at Lumbridge Castle, which is tied with Varrock Palace for the oldest castle in the game, appearing when RuneScape was first released on January 4th, 2001. In a nutshell, this is a terrible castle that would not survive a prolonged attack for any extended period. This is not a castle you want to be caught in when an invader is on your doorstep. My advice is to flee as soon as you see an attack coming, as defending this garbage building is barely worth considering. It's not all terrible, but what benefits this castle does have are far, far outweighed by the cons. So one thing Lumbridge Castle does have going for it is the abundance of surrounding farmland. In a hurry, villagers could stockpile a fair amount of food to survive a starvation siege. We also know that the castle has a cellar which would allow them to stockpile that food for a significant time. Not that they'll get to do that, because let's have a look at the walls now. These are fairly consistent and surround the entire building quite comprehensively. However, these walls are insultingly short and a skilled attacker could even scale them with a bit of a running jump. See those wall spikes? Totally useless. Throw a rug over them and you're good to go. Now, that's really a shame since the gatehouse here is pretty imposing. There's a portcullis and the gate is actually slightly recessed to allow defenders to fire at attackers from the sides. Except they can't because there is no overhang for murder holes and there are no arrow slots on the side. Another issue I have with this gatehouse is that there is no tunnel for the attackers to pass through to be ambushed through the walls. It's just too narrow. 
uh, it really should be a double gate as well. What a waste of a gatehouse. Even worse, there's another entrance at the rear of the castle which is hardly defended at all. Why bother charging through the front when the rear gate has such a flimsy defence? At the very least, that's a double gate, but it's not nearly enough to stop multiple attackers with a battering ram. I do like that it's round. Round towers are structurally more sound than square ones and offer better angles for archers. But without a second story, or even arrow slots, don't bother building a tower at all. Speaking of arrow slots, look at how sparsely they are distributed along both the outer wall and the main building. That's not nearly enough to fend off attackers. Now you might be thinking about placing your archers and mages on a higher level of the castle, so let's look upstairs. These battlements along the wall are called crenellations, and they're meant for archers to hide behind and then peer around them to fire. Except they can't, because these crenellations are ornamental. They don't reach up to head height, meaning they are completely useless, except to protect your feet. One more thing, I do like that the main building is elevated on a rampart, but given that this castle is situated next to a river, they really could have built a moat. That could have partially made up for the flimsy outer walls, and the gatehouse could have a drawbridge. Uh, one other nice thing about this castle is that every room has strong doors between them, allowing defenders to tactically retreat back. However, that's really all I like about this main building, this keep-like structure. Check out the staircases, which spiral the wrong way. Attackers ascending the stairs have more room on the right-hand side of their body, so they can swing a sword much further than those defending from above, whose right-hand side is impaired. Now check out all of these useless cannons. Firstly, cannons are not a defensive weapon. They are an offensive weapon designed to destroy walls, not defend them. They are too clumsy to attack anything except siege towers. Secondly, the attackers are on the other side of your walls. If you wanted to hit them, you would have to blow through your own walls first. Now you might be thinking, well how about enemies farther away? Well, you're surrounded by the rest of Lumbridge and its town buildings and forest, so your attackers are well protected. In summary, Lumbridge Castle is one of the worst defensive buildings I have ever seen, and my advice to you is to run, run far away, or escape into the cave beneath the castle without bothering to defend it. It is nothing more than a fancy house for the Duke, and does not even deserve the title of castle. And that's episode one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you for episode two, where we examine Varrock Palace. Do you think it's going to fare any better? We'll find out soon. In the meantime, happy scaping. <laughs>